Good Monday morning, friends. It's March 7th, 2022 when I'm filming this. It's a little chilly out this morning. It's minus 17 or about uh, 1.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Not the coldest it's been, but <laughs> a little nipply anyways. It's gonna be a good day though. We're just getting going. Let's see what the plans are for today. Let's get to some trucking. We have a step deck attached to us today. There it is. We're gonna bring this step deck into Winnipeg and pick up a different step deck that has some trusses on it. And we're taking those down to Moorhead or Fargo, North Dakota. Moorhead, Minnesota, the same city. So we better get going. It's gonna be a bit of a long day. On our way now, I'm gonna go put something on the trailer or switch trailers, rather. We're gonna switch trailers that has something on it already. Someone down in Moorhead in the United States needs something from up here. They're building something, I think, and uh, I'm gonna bring them down their materials that they need. I think it's about a three and a half to four hour ride once I get tied down here. It's gonna be oversized, so I'll have to flag it and tag it. And then we'll start making our way down. There's a loaded trailer. There's an empty one. I'm gonna leave this one here, I'm gonna take this one. Seems to me like we're attached. I'd say we're attached. So this side is right even flush with this side of the trailer. We're not wide on this side. Let's check on this side. This side we're sticking over about, what, 10 inches? What does that look like to you? A foot, 10 inches. So they always lean it over the passenger side like this because on two lane roads, I'm not hanging into opposing traffic. I'm hanging onto the shoulder a little bit. This is uh, number one reason why we always ask that people don't park on the shoulders unless if it's an actual emergency. The wide loads coming through like this, they need that shoulder space and they don't want to accidentally clip you. Just a friendly reminder. Not telling you how to live your life, just letting you know. Okay, so these are going down to Moorhead. I want to unload these this afternoon yet. So let's get going. Well, I'm feeling legendary today, so we came down to visit North Dakota. As you know, their state slogan is, be legendary. They don't leave you any options. Either be legendary or get out. <laughs> That's your options. It's a good thing we're legendary today. And we got about a two hour drive from here, a uh, two and a half hour drive from here. And get this unloaded, then I have a PO number to get this truck washed at the Blue Beacon. Hopefully we can keep it clean all the way back home. May as well, right? When you get access to a Blue Beacon, you take it. I wish we had more Blue Beacons in Canada. There's just a couple in Southern Ontario, but it'd be really nice if they'd open up a few in Western Canada, especially around Winnipeg. 
they're awesome. It's an awesome chain of truck washes, right? And there's like six to eight guys that'll jump out and wash your truck down for you by hand, all with like wand wash. They do a pretty good job. It's actually really nice. It's really convenient and it's fast. It's like 15 minutes, bing, bang, boom, in and out, clean truck. Port of the left lane gang here right now. I'm just passing a US military convoy here in North Dakota on I-29 southbound. This seems to be the lead vehicle. Obviously uh, transporting stuff from one base to another. Driving in the US, and I, uh, I don't drive in the US too much anymore, but I did uh, I did spend more time down here for nine years than I did actually back home in Canada. Most of my freight went down to the deep south of the U.S. So I was in the uh, U.S. all the time. And you see military convoys all the time in the U.S. And you, know, you always feel good when you see them. Uh, they're the good guys. And they're usually just, you know, moving troops and equipment from one base to another base. They don't have uh, like weapons displayed or, uh, you know, rolling down the highway and tanks <laughs> well tanks they mostly transport by uh, rail uh, they do that in Canada and the US and uh, all these uh, military vehicles for the most part as far as I, I know like I'm not in the military so as far as what I'm told they're just transporting equipment and people just doing different drills at different bases and you know, moving equipment around they don't actually travel down the interstates with like, uh, you know, 50 caliber guns. Righto, here we are, Moorhead, Minnesota. This is our exit. 500 meters, use the second from the right lane to turn right onto US 75 South, 8th Street South, signs for Brackenridge. Oh, whoa, whoa, Google, one thing at a time. I'm a simple man. One instruction at a time. Second, second from the right. Right lane to turn right onto US 75 South, 8th Street South, signs for Brackenridge. Brackenridge? What? Okay, so somewhere around here is our uh, delivery point. Ah, oh, it'll be right there. See that building being built back there? That's where these uh, wall panels will be going to. Meters. Use the left lane to turn left onto 30th Avenue South. Green means go. Okay, I need to turn left here. That'll definitely be it. Yeah, we're delivering to that. So if you're in the Fargo Moorhead area, over here on 75, right behind this mall looking building, uh, there's an apartment complex. The Looks like it's coming up. Left onto 30th Avenue South. Then you'll arrive at your destination. The trucker Josh had a part in building that. Couldn't have done it without me, just saying. <laughs> but seriously, if you are in the Moorhead area and you drive past this construction site, hey, uh, I had a hand, I had somewhat of a hand in it. I mean, I know they probably could have gotten another driver to bring it, but no, they, they chose me, I brought it. So now I feel like I'm a part of your development here in Moorhead, Minnesota. And I feel important, don't take this from me. All kidding aside, I'm, it looks like a nice building coming up over there. Green light, green means go. No U-turns though. They're very clear about that. All right, everybody, watch my trailer swing. Watch my trailer swing. Be nice, be careful. All right, there you go, there you go. Okay, I'm gonna get in this lane. So it's right up here. I'm gonna park on the street here and figure out where they want me. I'm gonna put my international symbol for park anywhere and get away with it, flashers. You've arrived. Thank you. I'm guessing, oh, no, no, I'm gonna turn right in there. Lots of space in there. Okay, lots of space. I don't know where they're gonna want me, but here we go. hazards on in here too just because I'm entering a construction site you see here here's our pass loads that we brought in here 
I'm guessing they're gonna wanna unload me over here somewhere. At least I'm off the road now. Uh, I'm gonna go and talk to the good people here, figure out where they want me, and uh, get in position and get the straps off of my load here and the flags and everything so that they can uh, grab their stuff. This looks like a pretty, uh, pretty big project. Cool. Talk to you guys in a bit, eh? What? Got my brain bucket on so my brain doesn't fall out while I'm here. That would be terrible. Very messy. Okay, so uh, I'm in position here. I'm gonna get the straps off and uh, we'll be out of here in no time. On the way back home, I'm just headed back empty. So as soon as I'm empty here, I'm actually going to Blue Beacon straight from here and get the truck washed. Very important. Most important part of the day, some might say. Then we're going home. I'm going to turn the truck off here. Lights off, truck off. All right. Well, let's get to work. All right, here we go. So I'm all lined up here. They're going to unload me right here. And then it'll look like that when we're done. Take those stacks there and these stacks here. And those are wall panels. That'll be for the third story of this thing. Empty trailer. That's good. Two days work is finished. Sort of, we still have to drive back and get the truck washed. I didn't forget, <laughs> you thought I forgot. That's all I ever talk about. You think I'm gonna forget about getting a truck washed? Come on, I annoy myself with how much I talk about washing the truck. You know, for someone who talks about it so much, you'd think his truck would be perfectly clean 100% of the time. <sighs> Easier said than done. Let's go. What? Stop beeping at me. Rude. Oh, <laughs> put it in neutral first. Okay. Works so much better that way. All right. Da, 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 da. Let the government know I'm done unloading. Hours and 57 minutes of remaining drive time. I didn't even get my half hour break here. Shoot. Three more minutes. We can't move for three minutes. Hopefully I won't be in the way. Okay, gotta look busy. Gotta look busy. We gotta waste three minutes so that my half hour not driving enters in for US hours of service. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, my receiver's name was Josh also. That's weird because my shipper's name was also Josh. So I picked up this freight from my shipper Josh and I, Josh the trucker, took it down to my receiver, Josh, the receiver. From Josh through Josh to Josh. <laughs> A lot of joshing around today. Wow. I'm told I can get out back here somewhere. That there's another gate. That's pretty neat on the pickup. There's like that slide out bed. So you can put stuff in there and slide it out so it's easier to get your stuff. That's pretty neat. Where would this other gate be? Aha, there it is. Through the gate we go. He said around the west side of the building. I obviously can't make that corner, so I'm not going that way. But he said I should be able to make it around this way. Oh, someone parked their pickup right there. That's a perfect spot to get in my way. I can still make it though. Still got room. I'm glad no one parked closer this way though. <clears throat> Clean my windows. I can see where I'm going. There we go. Aha. All right then. Not bad. Perfect. Hey, Snap Fitness. I used to have a membership with Snap. I would always stop at their gyms all around uh, Canada and the US, all over the place. 
when I was on the road. It looks like this mall is closed down. Maybe they're renovating it? need this whole driveway to turn right and we'll go back up to 94 and we'll go across to petrol and that's where the streak and beacon is don't hit the curb don't hit the curb don't hit the snowbank oh perfect like a professional wow Wonderful. Oh, this is one of those funny intersections. Okay, I kind of like these better than the roundabouts though. So good for you, Moorhead. I like these kind of things. Like, look at this. Instead of going straight across, I'm going to go over to the left side of traffic here to make my left turn onto uh, the interstate. See, we cross over to the left and now they're driving on the right. And that makes the entrance and exits onto the freeway much safer. I like these a whole lot better then the roundabouts, you see there, then they got the lights going through there, because now there's still traffic lights, so it doesn't confuse people. Green means go, red means stop. Simple. You get to a circle, you're like, what's going on? Why is there a circle? You know? <laughs> I, I know some people really like the roundabouts, and I understand how to use them. It's just, uh, not everybody else understands how to use them, you know what I'm saying? like that okay okay we're supposed to use the on-ramp to gain momentum gain speed so that when we hit the lane of traffic we're going the same speed as the traffic come on my friends we can do it oh there's a look at this little go-kart beside me here I actually don't need that lane look at a little go-kart this truck would eat that for breakfast. Drive right over it, wouldn't even flinch. Give me a little speed bump. Boom! That's all that would happen if you hit one of those. You gotta watch out for them. They'll sneak up on you. They're usually pretty aggressive too, because they're small, and they feel they need to drive more aggressively to be tough. But uh, little do they know, there's no way to look tough driving a little go-kart like that. <laughs> North Dakota! Once again, we're being legendary. So that was just a short little dip into Minnesota. Here we are, just on the other side of the city in West Fargo, North Dakota. We're gonna follow these big rigs ahead here into the Petrol Stopping Center. Different than Petrol Pass in Canada. This is the Petrol Stopping Centers in the US. And this is where the Blue Beacon is. I hope the lineup's not too long. Lots of pumps here. This is a big truck stop. We got Transex just sitting here in front of the driveway. He's not going down the driveway, so I'm assuming he's not going into Blue Beacon. I am. What you doing, bud? Not a parking spot, bud. Do, 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 do. Blue Beacon, enter. I shall. I'm excited. I haven't been to a Blue Beacon in so long. <laughs> I always love this. It's like getting a massage. I know that's the truck getting the massage, but it feels good myself, too. Just like watching it. It's like nobody in line either. No way. What are the chances? They always got these twisty, windy driveways with rocks on both sides so you don't drive over their lawn. 
and there's no backing out. Once you're in, you're in. You're going through. There is no escape. Stay wide to the right. Michelle. Cool, 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 cool. Which one do they want me to go to? Looks like the majority of people are going to this first one. Um, I'm going to, I'll go to this one. Unless they tell me to go to the other one. Door number one, I think this is door number one. Here we go. That guy's washing it on that side. And once this guy in front of me is done, he'll pull out. And then all what, six to eight guys will all wash this truck down real quick. And I'll be out of here in no time. They don't do the inside though, unless if you leave the windows down. We're almost done. They're just gonna rinse me off. So these washes cost uh, $58.75 or something like that, about 60 bucks American just for a general truck wash, no engine wash. Uh, you can add an engine wash on top of that. Uh, you can add a trailer wash, you can add all kinds of different things and just the price just goes up a little bit. When I had my own truck, I would always get the engine wash as well every time because I like to keep things clean under there as well. But my PO number I got only covered just a regular truck wash today, which is about 60 bucks. And just like that, steamy clean. Now let's try to keep it this way till we get back home. So I don't gotta wash it again or rinse it off when I get back. You guys wanna see it? I wanna see it. Let's go find a parking spot real quick. Uh, and then uh, I just gotta go around and back in this direction. I wanna see it too. I mean, it looks a thousand percent better, right? Definitely looks a thousand percent better. Look at those rims, they're nice and shined up. I'm gonna get those even shine here, yeah. The back. The frame. I mean, it's never perfect, right? But uh, man, that looks much, much better. Maybe I should have gotten the trailer wash too. I have to get a separate PO number for that. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Well, it's about seven o'clock right now. I just got back to uh, Canadian Customs and Border here. Just on the other side of that gate is Canada. I have an empty trailer behind me, so it uh, shouldn't be any problem. I don't have any, need any paperwork. I just need my passport and stuff to cross here. And of course, all that other information that they uh, now require. Oh, it looks like my turn. I gotta roll up. And that was a long day. I got finished at 8.30. We didn't really waste any time either. I didn't even stop for fuel. I'm gonna get fuel tomorrow. The only thing we had to wait for was uh, we had to get a wheel seal replaced first thing in the morning. But they got on that right away and had it done in like a half hour after I got there. So it was just a long day. Long day. Time is now. Oh boy, late. It's time to go home, have a shower, go straight to bed. <laughs> that was a really nice run though. I liked it. If I could do that every day or every other day or whatever, that was a nice day run. If I could just, uh, if I would had the truck ready because like I said I had to get the wheel seal replaced first thing in the morning but if the truck was ready and I could leave the like, first thing in the morning yeah I'd be back around supper time it'd be a little bit of a long day but uh it'd be a productive day Fargo and back or Moorhead and back it's a good run guess that would be about counting all the driving to Winnipeg to get the load and stuff eh, between 700 and 800 kilometers about 500 miles or so but anyways, I'm gonna wrap it up here. I'm going to bed, I'm showering, I'm going straight to bed. Did I say I'm going to bed? I'm going home and then going to bed. That's where bed is. 
I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe. More trucking on the way tomorrow.